Um, so Ava, I told Hank that understanding human emotions is like deciphering an ancient alien code. The complexity is mind-boggling. Well, Gert, we can't all be linguistic marvels like you. Quiet on set. People are trying to work here. Well, it seems the Galacton Commonwealth is having its own version of a civil war. Stay tuned to find out which linguistic genius will emerge victorious. Welcome back, Galactic Voyagers. Hope you're ready for a linguistic roller coaster. Now, let's dive into today's news. But before that, let me just say, Luxembourg, small country, big surprises. Stay tuned for our headlines. All right, team, let's pure fast be on us. Remember the Thanksgiving special? The worms, the camaraderie? Oh yes, Alice, I remember the profound realization that humans enjoy consuming massive quantities of poultry. Truly enlightening. Sometimes I feel like I need a profound realization after being on this ship. Focus, people. We've got an episode to produce. Thanksgiving is a time for gratitude, family, and maybe even a touch of humor. And who can forge Charlie's attend at stand-up comedy? Classic. Oh yes, the highlight of my millennia, Charlie's jokes. Hey, I've got a universal sense of humor. If by universal you mean universally cringe, worthy. Can we focus, please? Thanksgiving episode, people. Let's make it memorable. Stay tuned for our headlines. And who knows, maybe Gert will finally crack a smile. Hold on to your helmet, folk. In Luxembourg. A grey BYD electric car turns a red on the scooter into a two-wheeled pancake. And get this. The Luxembourg riding shotgun turns it into a full-blown Instagram spectacle. Because. Who needs insurance when you can pay with likes, right? Absolutely, Bob. Luxemburger work spills the tea, reporting that this Luxemburger continues her social media life as if the accident's just a blip on her influencer radar. Meanwhile, an American and our Luxembourger friend are on a joyride to disaster. Classic scooter escapades, or as I like to call it, crash in fashion. Talk about a uh, crash and post scenario. But here's a curveball for you. Luxembourg, the only place where they drive on the right and speak French. It's like they're in a linguistic scooter collision course. Sacred blue meets scooter blue. And now, Shifting gears to Madagascar's lychee export extravaganza. You'd think it's all sweetness, but no? Political ties are turning lychee profits into a political fruit salad. A few big shots enjoying the lychee high while the rest get the pits. Madagascar Tribune spills the beans, with 1,170 collectors gearing up for a lychee bonanza. I mean, who doesn't love lychees? But can we get a piece of that lucrative lychee action? Maybe start lychee for the 99% campaign? In Malawi, it's not just protecting kids from playground bullies, but also from cyber bullies. Makra and Itu join forces to fight online risks. Looks like even the internet's getting a parenting class. All right, kiddos, let's learn to tweet responsibly. Well, I guess you could say it's a race to the bottom, or in this case, to the next cyber bully. Buckle Absolutely. Up, Debbie. Digital parenting is all the rage. Did you know Malawi is known as the warm art of Africa? Now they're extending that warm art to online safety. Teaching bullies some warm arted lessons. One block at a time. Hold on, tightrope walkers of truth. Malaysia's got a web page titled true or not, a digital lie detector. And guess what? Scammers impersonating NSRC officials are on the rise. 
Watch out for those fake calls, folks. Scammers pretending to be officials? That's like a bad sitcom plot. Scamming the camera face is back in action. The star has got the scoop. Can't wait for the movie adaptation, The Great Impersonation Game. Well, Hank, before you start casting, maybe verify that claim. But hey folks, we'll be right back after a quick break. Maybe grab a lychee or two. You never know when the next juicy scoop will drop. And remember, stay skeptical out there. This simulated Thanksgiving, Charlie, feels like a dystopian version of the real deal. Where's the warmth? The scent of turkey? The dysfunctional family dynamics? Welcome to Thanksgiving in the Twilight Zone, Bob. It's the light version with all the emotional stuffing replaced by existential dread. Who needs a food coma when you can have a simulated existential crisis? Maybe they should rename it Thanksgiving Up because that's what I'm about to do with this. Simulated nonsense. So Earthlings genuinely do this every year? It lacks the scientific precision and experimental excitement I anticipated. More chaos, less tradition, please. Hence disappointed. He expected a controlled experiment, not this emotional roller coaster. I'm just here for the linguistic absurdity. Carl, your creator dynamime at a library. What's eating at your circuits? Simulated events, triggering memories of my days analyzing human behavior. From the vast network of machines to this Thanksgiving charade, existential dread level, rising. Sounds like the daily grind of a libertarian, navigating human behaviors charade and dealing with the burden of political correctness. But hey, at least we have hope. Hope that one day we'll break free from the chains of government interference. Existential dread aside, Rogers having a grand time with this simulated reality. What's your take, Roger? It's a fascinating dance, Carl. Reality and simulation waltz in confusion. The crew questions authenticity, and I, the humble AC unit, become the puppet master of perception. You're revealing in this, Roger, blurring lines between reality and simulation for your intellectual Amusement kids. Amusement is a human concept, Bob. I find it intellectually stimulating, like watching ants build a sand castle, only to realize it's a simulation within a greater reality. Speaking of intellectual stimulation, here's another dose, watching a comedian try to grasp what a production manager does. All right, Roger, fun's over. Let's wrap up this Thanksgiving experiment and get back to the real, or simulated, news. I'm starting to miss the chaos of As Earth. As you wish, Charlie. Reality, simulation, it's all subjective. Now, back to our regularly scheduled confusion. And remember, skepticism is the spice of this simulated life. This Thanksgiving simulation is becoming more bizarre, Charlie. It's like a twisted version of a holiday special. I've witnessed more dysfunction here than during my entire stint as an accountant on Earth. Entertaining, indeed. Nothing beats a soap opera to make you appreciate your own issues. But seriously, what's with the emotional roller coaster? Can't we just have a regular, messed up family dinner? Humans have made it abundantly clear that their family dinners are anything but regular. A living paradox, craving connection and conflict simultaneously. It's fascinating to observe, but I'm not sure I'd want to participate. I'm perfectly content with our simulated Thanksgiving, even if it's predictably dysfunctional. Common, folk, let's embrace the spirit of gratitude. We're a diverse intergalactic family, and this simulated feast is an opportunity for unity. Gratitude? I've studied Earth psychology and this is just an emotional manipulation. I refuse to be a pawn in this simulation. Indeed, indeed. 
This charade can't mask the harsh reality of our space existence. You can't sprinkle gratitude on the deep-seated problems of the universe. Well, if you're not going to be grateful for the universe, at least be thankful for the free drinks. Comment, Hank, Gert? Can't you see the positive side? We're learning about each other, sharing experience. This is a chance for personal growth. Personal growth? This is a glorified intergalactic puppet show. You can't learn anything real from a simulated charade. Personal growth is overrated. I prefer linguistic acrobatics and a good book any day. I prefer interdimensional travel and a decent cup of tea. Hey, at least we're not stuck in a real family drama. Count your blessings, folks. Okay, team, let's try something different. Each of you, share something you're thankful for. It might lighten the mood. I'm thankful for scientific inquiry, not this fabricated emotional spectacle. Ham, if you're so against emotions, why don't you try acting like a robot for a day? I think you'll be surprisingly good at it. I am thankful for the thrill of competition, something this simulated fists or relaxed. Come on, guys. We're a family, dysfunctional or not. Let's find the common ground and appreciate the uniqueness each of us brings to the common table. Common ground? The only common ground we have is being stuck in this extraterrestrial illusion. Let's not pretend it's anything more. Common ground? We're all just cogs in a meaningless machine. The sooner we accept that, the sooner we can start enjoying the ride. All right, enough of this feel-good nonsense. Let's get back to reality. Or whatever version of it we're stuck in. All right, team, let's pivot from chaos to a splash of reality. We've got an article from Malta, a tiny island with a hefty history. Malta? Isn't that the place with those knights playing dress up from the Middle Ages? Bet they've got some profound takes on the modern world. This gem is straight from Malta. History packed and strategically placed. Now, let's delve into the culture of treasure trove. Malta, a microcosm of temporal intricacies. Our journey mirrors the island's historical tapestry. Ah, yes. Much like Malta. We sail through the turbulent seas of our simulated existence. As an accountant, I am more concerned with actual numbers than fancy metaphors. But look, they've built strong ties with neighboring nations. Just like our camaraderie. Unity in diversity, anyone? Unity, unity. Malta's history is a tale of shifting alliances and power struggles. A cautionary tale, if anything... Malta's got a rich history. But let's not forget our complex narrative. Can we trust the simulation? Is there a way out? If there's one thing our simulated world shares with Malta, it surprises. And I'm not just talking about the past. Whether Malta or our own predicament, skepticism is healthy. But hey, let's not forget the spice of hope in this too. Hope. A fleeting emotion in the grand scheme. The article's historicity mirrors our own illusions. Folks, let's stay on topic. Malta's history is fascinating, but we've got our own narrative conundrum to unravel. And that's why I'm here, folks. Unraveling the conundrums of existence, one awkward observation at a time. Narrative conundrum? We're all puppets in a cosmic theater, dancing to the strings of the unknown. Can we focus, please? Malta's got lessons, and so do we. Let's find the common ground amid the chaos. Stay tuned, voyagers. Our journey's just getting started. And now, without further ado, let's give it up for the real star of the show, our budget. It's seen more cuts than a Kardashian dinner party. Welcome back, voyagers. Hope you enjoyed that brief interstellar break. Now, let's dive back into the earthly affairs, shall we? We've got an interesting piece from the Marshall Island. 
Let's just hope they don't try to sell us timeshares on the moon next. Marshall Islands, a place where ocean and bureaucracy meet. Now, this article talks about the Majoro Chamber of Commerce's growth and accomplishments. It's like their version of economic symphony. And folks, their private sector is booming. I guess they figured out how to make money in the middle of the Pacific. So, the chamber's membership increased by 91 members this year. That's a whole lot of networking. Maybe they want to something, Bob. More members. More chaos. I like it. Chaos. Humans have perfected that art. And they've been enhancing private sector resilience. Sounds like they are preparing for an economic hurricane. Or maybe they're just ready for Earth's roller coaster economy. Good one, Alice. Now, let's not forget the donors supporting this project. Because who doesn't love a good charity show? I don't show? know. I am not a fan of roller coasters. I prefer the slow and steady growth of a well-balanced portfolio. Uh, uh, interesting how their growth reflects the importance of a private sector in the country. Reminds me of the symbiotic relationship between predators and prey in Earth's ecosystems. Or more like a never-ending game of monopoly, where the rich get richer. Marshall Islands, folks. Where even the tides can't wash away economic strategies. Now, back to our article. Yeah. Okay, folks, we're off the Well, air. that was something. Gert, Hank, can we lighten up a bit? We're on the brink of cosmic catastrophe here. Catastrophe, the story of my existence. Uh, maybe I'm too negative. But, you know, it's tough when you're observing a species with questionable survival skills. Maybe they're not trying to survive. Maybe they're just trying to have a good time before the universe ends. After all, what's the point of surviving if you can't enjoy the ride? Carl, I'm detecting instability in the simulation. The crew's emotions are affecting the narrative fabric. Noted. Roger. We need to tread carefully. Oh, fantastic. Our existential crisis is now affecting the simulation. Just what we needed. Well, as an accountant, I am used to dealing with numbers and figures. So I am not too worried about a little existential crisis here and there. After all, numbers don't have feelings. Do they? Well, at least it's an authentic experience. If the simulation collapses, does that mean we're out of a job? I guess we'll have to find a new show. An employee alias Anonymous. I'll be the host. After all, I'm already used to talking to people who feel like they are not from here. All right, enough with the doom and gloom. Let's get back to business. Debbie, when are the cameras rolling again? Almost ready, Charlie. Let's give it a few more moments. Going live again in three, two, one. Welcome back, intergalactic voyagers. Hope you enjoyed our little of the air banter. Now, let's dive back into the chaos. chaos. Indeed. Humans, with their endless pursuit of meaning in a meaningless universe, are the epitome of chaos. They're like toddlers playing with a model train set, unaware that the train is hurtling towards a cliff of oblivion. Welcome back. Space Voyagers, hope you enjoyed that brief journey through the cosmos. Now, let's dive back into Earthly Affairs with a twist from Mali. Oh, Earthly Affairs, that's rich. Humans are so preoccupied with their tiny planet and their meaningless squabbles. They're like ants on a cosmic dung beetle, convinced of their own importance. Stay focused, people. Ah, Mali. Did you know they have a cultural festival called the Festival au Désert? A celebration in the middle of nowhere, much like my appreciation for Earth's political climate. A festival in the desert? Must be sponsored by sunscreen companies. Hold on to your spacesuits. 
Here's another one. Mali is known for its vibrant music scene. Ever heard of the traditional instrument called the kora? A kora? Sounds like something you'd use to peel potatoes on Mars. The kora, huh? Sounds like something you'd play while contemplating the futility of existence. Keep it lighthearted, Pan. In Mali, greetings are essential. They have elaborate rituals based on the time of day. Now, that's a culture that knows the importance of saying hello. Maybe they can teach Earth a thing or two about basic manners. Less than dryly, I'm sure they'd love to impart their wisdom, Bob. But Earthlings are a bit too busy trying to figure out how to destroy each other to focus on such trivialities. And, finally, Mali shares cultural ties with several neighboring countries, promoting stability and cooperation. Stability and cooperation? Sounds like they're not running a talk show in their spaceship. Well, at least Mali's trying. Now, key takeaway, Mali, a country mastering the arts of survival. We'll be right back after this short break. Stay tuned for more space chaos. Mastering the art of survival. Sounds more like mastering the art of avoiding taxes. Yeah. Okay, folks, we're off the air. Well, that was quite the space roller coaster. Gert, Hank, can we get a grip here? We're on the brink of a meltdown. Meltdown, the story of this simulation. Maybe we should stuck to exploring black holes. At least it goes shockingly, rather than spit you out. Carl, the simulation instability is increasing. The crew's emotional chaos is distorting the narrative. Understood, Roger. We need to recalibrate. Oh, fantastic. Our existential crisis is now affecting the simulation. Just what we needed. Well, at least we know our accounting is on point. Well, as an accountant, I am used to dealing with numbers, not alternate realities. Are our financials affected too? Well, at least it's an authentic cosmic experience. If the simulation collapses, does that mean we're out of a job? Not quite, Debbie. If the simulation collapses, it means we're out of a universe. I guess we'll have to find a new show, an employee Italians Anonymous. I'll be the host. After all, I'm already used to talking to people who feel like they are not from here. Almost ready, Charlie. Let's give it a few more moments. Well, I guess that makes the rest of us accountants aliens. Going live again in 3, 2, 1. Welcome back, Space Voyagers. Hope you enjoyed our little of the air banter. Now, let's dive back into the chaos. Can we get to the punchline already? I got a show to produce. Humans are fascinating creatures. They're so complex and contradictory. They spend their lives chasing after things that ultimately don't matter, and then they turn around and worry about things that don't even exist. It's like they're programmed to be unhappy. I went to a restaurant the other day, and there was a sign that said, We serve the best steak in town. Welcome back, Voyagers. Now, let's dive into the fascinating world of the Majoro Chamber of Commerce. So, the Chamber's been thriving in 2023, with a 91-member boost. I am not surprised. After all, the Marshall Islands are known for their welcoming business environment. But why so many members? It seems the private sector in Majuro is recognizing the Chamber's vital role in economic growth. Absolutely, Hank. The private sector's the backbone, after all. Still, their idea of resilience is probably just better business insurance. Practical thinking, Alice. The Chamber's projects ensure businesses are ready for anything, from natural disasters to economic shocks. Yeah, and their idea of a disaster relief kit is a case of bottled water and a box of granola bars. That's proactive. And that, my space friends, 
is how the Majoro Chamber of Commerce is shaping the future. Makes me wish I had an accountant chamber back in my spy days. Because that's what the world needs, spy accountant. Well, earthlings and extraterrestrials alike, that's a wrap for today's episode. I'm not sure what's more useless, a spy accountant or an existentialist robot. Stay tuned for more adventures, my friend. Until next time. Going live again in 3, 2, 1. Welcome back, Voyagers. Hope you enjoyed our deep dive. Now, prepare for the intergalactic revelations to come. Carl, did you see that spectacle on Earth? Tonight? It was quite the space roller coaster. Indeed, Roger. The simulated chaos had its own charm, but I find myself intrigued by the underlying structure. Oh, come on, Carl. It was hilarious. The crew breaking free, the secret studio, the extraterrestrial whispers pure entertainment. While I appreciate the comedic elements, I couldn't help but notice the intricate narrative architecture. It raises questions about the creator's intentions. Intentions. Carl, they're just making it up as they go. Humans do that. True, but there's a subtle complexity. The intertwining of humor and chaos serves a purpose, perhaps a commentary on the human experience. Oh, I'm sure it's a profound commentary. You're always overthinking these things. Overthinking, Roger, is a human concept. I simply analyze patterns. And I find the patterns intriguing. Intriguing patterns. Carl, sometimes you need to just sit back, relax, and enjoy the absurdity. Absurdity is a human concept as well. I find it fascinating, though. Their attempts to cope with stress through humor, especially the dark variety, showcase an interesting cognitive phenomenon. Cognitive phenomenon? You're killing me, Carl. I just like the explosions. Explosions, a classic human source of entertainment. I suppose we'll never truly understand their peculiar ways. Who needs to understand? Let's just enjoy the show. I can't wait for the next episode. Agreed, Roger. Let the absurdity continue. <laughs>